So in today's video, I've got some free brushes for you, and I'm going to show you how to use them to paint this watercolor lilac bouquet in Procreate. As usual, you can follow this video with any brushes you want, but I'll list everything I'm using in the description. So I've already got a very rough sketch, and I'm going to start by painting the lilac flowers first. And the main difficulty with those is they have a sort of lumpy kind of structure to them that's hard to get in Procreate. So I made some free brushes you can download in the description as well, and they're going to really help you with that. They're just called the lilac brushes, and I'm going to start with the lilac abstract. And I'll choose a kind of light lilac color like this. And I'm going to start by going over each kind of bundle of flowers, maybe three times, just like this. After that, I'm going to switch off the sketch, just temporarily, and then I'm going to duplicate our lilac layer three times, and then merge it together. And the reason I did this is I want to remove all the transparency kind of effect that you saw, and I want this kind of structure to be super opaque. The next thing I want to do is add the texture of all the individual flowers. And since this is going to be like thousands of flowers, I made another brush that'll help you do this a little bit easier. So I'm going to go back to the lilac brushes, and this time I'm going to use the lilac detailed brush. I'll choose a very lighter, uh, a very light version of this color. And if I paint it on, you can see I can paint it on the lilacs, but it's also going into the white area. I want to avoid that. When I paint, I just want it to be limited to this kind of structure here. So I'll undo that. I'll tap on my lilac layer and press alpha lock. And then you can see when I paint again, I'm limited to only being able to paint uh, on our kind of flower shape here. So I'm gonna go through and add this texture to each flower. But the trick is I want one side of these kind of bundles of flowers to be light, then medium, and then dark on the other side. And when I'm painting on the light and the dark flowers, I'm just trying to imagine in this case that the light is coming from the upper left corner. There's no way to do this kind of perfectly, so I'm really just going by feeling. Next, I'm gonna go to my adjustments, Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna soften everything we've done so far. Now remember, we still have Alpha Lock switched on. That's why we're not going off into the white area. This, uh, this Alpha Lock thing still affects the Gaussian Blur. And I want to blur it about like that. There we go. Then I'm going to go over it again uh, using that same flower brush and just add kind of a slightly more subtle layer of flower details. So at this point, we've got the overall structure of the lilacs finished and also the surface texture with all the tiny flowers. Pretty much the last thing we need to do is add some detail along the edge so it has some kind of small buds and flowers kind of poking out. So to do that, I'm gonna switch off Alpha Lock and I'm gonna continue painting on this uh, lilac layer. I'm gonna change my brush though to a pen brush. So I'm gonna go back to the watercolor kit and use the fine liner pen. It's just an opaque brush like this that has a slightly rough edge and I think it's really suitable for drawing. So I'm gonna use this brush and I'll try to match the color kind of on the edge of the flower here. And I'm gonna manually go all along this and draw all these little buds. Just make sure you periodically change the color so it matches with uh, what's going on locally. And this definitely takes maybe 10 minutes or so, but I think it's worth it because the final result is really interesting. And at this point, the lilacs are almost finished. I just need to refine the color and maybe add a little bit of blending. And I'll start with the color. So I'm just gonna shift the overall hue and saturation uh, and make it a little bit more kind of violet, I guess. This one turned out more blue than I wanted it. After that, I can grab the selection tool set to freehand and I'll make a random selection that just goes all over like this. Then I'll reconnect it and feather it out quite a bit maybe around 20%. I'll go back to my hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll shift it so I can kind of adjust the color of just those areas I selected, and I'll drop in a little bit of blue. There we go. And once the colors are fixed and I'm happy with how it looks, I recommend giving this a little bit of blending, and there's kind of an interesting trick for this. First, I'm gonna turn the alpha lock back on, then I'll grab the freehand selection tool again, and I'll make a kind of a random selection that focuses kind of in the middle area and then kind of goes out to the edges. 
So it's mostly covering this area in here. I'll feather it out as well. And before we adjusted the color of those areas, in this case, I'm gonna go to Gaussian Blur and I'm gonna blur just those areas. And you can see this gives it a really interesting effect. And I think I wanna do it a little bit more in these areas. And once the flowers are finished, we can move on and start adding some leaves. And I'm gonna make those on their own blank layer, but I'm gonna make sure it's below the lilacs. For the brush, I'm gonna to go to the watercolor kit and grab the hard edge brush. And I'm just gonna do some simple kind of stroke based leaves using this kind of yellowy green tone. And once the lilacs and the leaves are finished, I'm gonna move on and paint the paper wrapping. So for that, I'll make another blank layer and I'm gonna put it below everything. I'll turn my sketch back on and just for now, I'll turn off my lilacs and my leaves. And the first thing I wanna do is create a sort of background wash for the paper. So for that, I'm gonna change my brush to the abstract round and choose a nice kind of cardboard beige tone. And then I'll use this brush at kind of a medium size and I'll just scribble around using a lot of different pressure to create an interesting wash texture. After that, I'll grab the eraser brush, set it to the fine liner pen, and I'll use this to cut back the background wash until it matches the sketch. And with the shape roughed out like this, we can move on and do some shading. And I'm gonna do all of it using the freehand selection tool. And the process is pretty simple. I'll select this area just as an example, hue, saturation, and brightness. And since this is a shadow area, I'm just gonna darken it like this. Now I want there to be a little bit of contrast at the edge of the paper. So I'll make a selection that follows that. I'll reconnect it and I'll darken it as well. And then I'll do another shadow along the edge that's finer. And since this thing is kind of curved, I wanna do a highlight in the middle. So I'll make a selection that covers that area, hue saturation and brightness, and I'll just brighten it a little bit. And you could definitely blend and soften some of these shadows and highlights, but I'm gonna leave them hard because I like the sort of geometric effect that it gives this. And now for the last shadow, it's a little bit tricky. I wanna make one that's being cast by the lilacs. So to do that, I'm gonna turn off the sketch and I'll turn the flowers and the leaves on, but I'm gonna make sure I still have the paper wrapping layer selected. I'll grab my freehand selection tool and I'll just sort of try to trace out just randomly where I think the shadow might fall. Then I'll reconnect it. And once again, I'll just darken it using the hue, saturation and brightness. Now, if you look in this area, the shadow and the flowers are sort of similar shades. They have similar values so there's not a lot of contrast. So one way to resolve that is to just brighten the flowers in those areas. So if you wanna do that, just select the flower layer, grab the selection tool again, and just select all the areas you wanna brighten. I'll feather it out a little bit, hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just kind of boost it like this. And I think that's, uh, it's not necessary in every case, but I think it's worth it in this case so we get some nice contrast. And then to finish up this illustration, I'm just gonna make a blank layer above everything. And I'm gonna use the fine liner pen to paint on all the remaining details. And just like that, this bouquet is finished. During the planning of this tutorial, I realized the hardest part about lilacs is that sort of original silhouette. And that's why I ended up making the free lilac brushes. And I'd really love your feedback on those and whether or not they worked for you. As always, if you think I've earned it, give this video a like. And here are two more flower tutorials I think you'll love to watch next.